I've always been a firm believer of following your heart and doing something that always uh, uh, brings you happiness. My love for food really comes from like my family. Like Ethiopian and Eritrean cultures, um, you know, just like so many other cultures are all about community, family, friends. Food has been such a huge part of our life, our culture, because it's always with people. It's such a full culture. And my goal was to really, this love that I have of Ethiopian and Eritrean culture, it was so embedded in me. I wanted the world to know about it. Oh my goodness, uh, our chicken dips, I have to say, and I am gonna be bold enough to say it, our chicken dips is hands down one of the best chicken dips in the country. I will say that. And, I'll, and I will say that because I've eaten a lot of chicken dips. That's how I know. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eren Gavrik Xavier. I'm the owner and founder of Makina Cafe, an Eritrean and Ethiopian eatery based in Long Island City, Queens, New York. I've eaten a lot of chicken dips. <laughs> and not just in New York, but in DC, and Atlanta, and LA. So our chicken dips is our number one seller. I eat this food every day, so if I eat it every day, then I want to make sure that when people eat this food that they enjoy it. So I cook it the way I would want to eat it. Good. Lentils! This is probably 25 pounds of uh, red onions. <laughs> I'm serious. It's called kule. It's the paste that we uh, that we prepared and cooked for hours. So the water completely cooked down, mixed in with berberi, the sauce that we saw, ginger and garlic. And the secret about berberi is like the longer you cook it, the more balanced the flavor gets. Well, welcome to our kitchen commissary. Um, been here for a year and a half. And this is pretty much like our production center. This is where we prepare every single one of our dishes, um, prep, cook, pack up. And then from here, we do catering. From here, we do pick up and delivery. And then we also supply our entire truck operation. So oh, look, this is so beautiful. That when you eat it, it just explodes in your mouth. Most of it, what you smell is the, the berberi. Because the, the, the amount of berberi that we put in is a lot. So, uh, open Makina August 2017. And uh, for, I would say, at least like a year, it was a struggle. Um, Washington, D.C. is the biggest population of like Ethiopian and Eritreans. And so a lot of people in that area, or at least they live there, know about Ethiopian and Eritrean food and they're very familiar with it, but not necessarily in New York. Labors of love. Nobody knew about us. People would come and they'd be like, Ethiopian food, what? Take a picture and go back. I'm like, order. <laughs> Don't just take a picture. When we first started, 10% of the people that we were interacting with probably have had Ethiopian food and 90% didn't. Uh, Jero, the chicken, beet salad, and cabbage. And so I took that very seriously and I knew that was the role of Makina as a food truck, which is to educate and to amplify the culinary contribution of Eritrean and Ethiopian food. So I think I'm gonna make you two injera plates and one rice plate. So I'm gonna do injera with chicken. So injera is the tiniest, tiniest grain um, in the world and it is gluten-free. But we grew up eating it, it's bread. Um, the process is very similar as a sourdough. So we call it like a flat sourdough, flat bread. Uh, but it's a perfect combination because all the vegetables and all the stews are so flavorful and very impactful. The injera kind of soaks in all the juices, all the flavors, and it gives it just that perfect balance. There we go. There is no other uh, country that, you know, eat injera or that prepare injera, and so we take a lot of pride in that. <laughs> we really do, and it's, it's super delicious. 
So when I designed for the menu, I didn't want to just add all the popular dishes on the menu. I wanted to be very specific and intentional. Today, I'm actually going to show you how to make chicken dips, uh, traditionally a staple, um, to really get the flavor that we want. We marinate our meat about 24 hours to 48 hours in advance. So this is chicken thighs. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of lemon juice. We poured in lemon. I am from Eritrea, but born and raised in Ethiopia. And uh, my family and I lived there until our teen years. Um, and uh, war started between Ethiopia and Eritrea. And my family and I were forced to leave Ethiopia and relocate in the States. When I came to this country, what I understood was the narratives that was being told was not really a narrative that I wanted to hear. There were kids making fun of us about the stigmas that they heard about Eritrea and Ethiopian. We put in some fresh herbs, some parsley, cilantro, scallion. It was said so often in relation to poverty, it was so often in relation to lack of food. And I didn't want my story to be a representation of just war. And that's a part of my life, but it's not my entire life. And I think that Ethiopia and Eritrea with thousands of history behind them, they have something to offer to the world. And I want the world to know about that. And number one, it being the uniqueness of the food that they have. This is the secret spice blend. You see a little bit of berbere, see a little bit of salt. We have a little bit of uh, black pepper. It's a lot of spice. That's why our chicken is really good. So you see that, you see that berbere, like it's so beautiful. I call it the gold currency and it's berbere. And berbere is a spice that we use on almost everything, almost everything that has some sort of spice and we love spicy food. That spice has eight to 12 different spices that are dried up, grinded together. You know, the chili and the dried garlic, dried ginger, the uh, cardamom, fenugreek, black cumin, white cumin, and then the list goes on. And so depending on what you cook, you really pull out the different spices. You will find it in every household, not in almost, in every household. When you see the cuisine, it's represented as like Ethiopian cuisine, but both Eritrea and Ethiopia consume the same food. And so it's very important for me that I represent both of them. It's super healthy, extremely delicious, um, extremely flavorful, so diverse. You know, it's just really something that you've never had before. We get a lot of uh, vegetarian and uh, vegan uh, consumers. 45%, if not 50% are like, strictly for the vegetables. It's very important to me to represent as a female, as a Black-owned business. My story is not just my story, it's our story. Um, I represent millions of Eritrean and Ethiopians that look like me, that have similar stories as me, that, that have walked similar journeys as me. All of us, like, doing our small part, and we've been putting this seed for quite some time and we've been watering it and we're starting to see that grow. You know, that's my main motivator is to really bring our culture in a positive way, to highlight it in a positive way. Enjoy. <laughs> that's it for this episode of Food Curated. I'm Liza Deguia. Be sure to connect with us on social media and eat more stories. I'll see you next week.